Inspiring you to set the marketplace ablaze in partnership with an awesome and limitless God. This is the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Podcast, and this isn't business as usual. Here's your host and Chief Fire Igniter, Shay Vines. Welcome back to the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Podcast. This is your host, Shay Vines, and our goal here is to inspire you to operate your business completely yielded and in partnership with our awesome and limitless God. Being a kingdom-driven entrepreneur is not the same thing as being a Christian who happens to be a business owner. A kingdom-driven entrepreneur is motivated by seeing an increase of the kingdom of God through the work they do in business. And they are propelled forward in business by operating from the truth of Matthew 6 and 33. They seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, knowing that all things will be added. So this is why we are here. And I am so grateful that you have chosen to join us today. Today's sponsor is one of our Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Certified Service Providers, Kelly Botter. If your coaching or service-based business revenue is growing, but you know it's time to level up your messaging and revenue to the six-figure level and beyond this year, and more importantly, you have the heart to make a difference in your industry and steward a specific message that God has given you, I encourage you to check out the Power of One Framework. The Power of One Framework equips you to achieve these results by aligning with your God-given identity in your end-season assignments, mastering and articulating your program value, establishing your preeminent positioning, and launching your flagship offer with strategic organic content. To receive your complimentary business assessment to see where the gap is between where you are now and where you want to be, visit powerofoneframework.com forward slash benchmark. And now to our guest for today. Today's guest on the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Podcast is returning guest, Latara Venice. She is the founder of the Color Your Soul Company, and also she is the director of culture on Team KDE. One of the dangers we face as we begin to thrive in doing business in partnership with God is complacency. When you're so grateful for all he has done and you've already experienced more than you had imagined, it can be easy to get comfortable, even when God has called you to more. And Latara shares transparently about the powerful and practical steps that she has taken over the past several months to shift from a place of complacency to growing in the capacity that God has given her in both life and business. And I think you'll be truly blessed by what she shares. So I'm going to get out of the way, listen in and enjoy this conversation I had with Latara Venice. Latara Venice, how are you? I'm good, Shabazz. How are you? I am doing really well. It's nice to have you back on the podcast. I was looking up right before I hit record and your last episode was podcast 304, which was March 3rd of last year. And we were just talking about how in your, in your world, <laughs> nine months ago, mm-hmm. was like three years ago. <laughs> You said three. I said six. You did say six. <laughs> because it's just like, I mean, I probably say this every time you're on the podcast, every time I have a conversation <laughs> with you, an interview or whatever, but it's just been so fun to watch yeah. because when it might have felt like a slow, if you t- go back like maybe six years ago, like literally six years ago, it might have felt like there was a lot of slow moments that led to that point. Mm-hmm. But there were some breakthrough moments that we've talked about in previous episodes that really um, sped up the trajectory Ooh. of change and breakthrough mm-hmm. and shift for you. And mm-hmm. I've only seen that pace mm-hmm. increase mm-hmm. over my time in relationship with you. I was having my meeting with um, the prophetic team for Color Your Soul and uh, it was Teresa and Ashley. And I said, they always ask me about prayer because that's a part of their job as a prophetic team. Right. And they always ask me about prayer points. And so I was like, well, I, I really need y'all to pray for all these transitions happening in my life right now, because there's a bunch of <laughs> transitioning, some good, some not great. Right. But still transitions all the same. And um. <clears throat> This has been amazing because I've been like, God, can I really handle all this? And he's like, well, you seem to be doing a pretty good job of it, you know? (laughs) 
and I got you. That's what he yes. always tells me. Yes. And it, and and I look and it reminds me of just even when I started this process and everything that was going on and God always reminding me a lot of people couldn't make it through what you made it through. And this is why you do the work that you do. Yes. And this is why you show up like you do. Yes. And and so it's it's been um a different kind of flow, being able to say, God trusts me enough. And whoo, here's another transition. Well, God says he trusts me. Yes. Because <laughs> transitions happen, change happens, but all the time. Some people can't handle change. And whereas God has taught me to be able to, even when I can't handle it, to kind of sit back and go, okay, what does all this mean? And how do I move forward in it yes. here? You know, and does this transition take precedent or is it a, like a, I don't like to say a lower transition, but is it something that maybe I can do one step today and do a next, next step next week? You know, knowing all of that, because it doesn't mean that you you juggle it all at one time. Yes, it means, that's the grace, right? Yes. That's, like, that's that moving in mm-hmm. grace. Not feeling like I yeah. got to grind out the transition and the yes. change. Yes, yes, yes. And yeah. that, has, that has been the most phenomenal um, thing, especially for me, considering where I started from. Yeah. <laughs> to where I am today. Amen. Yes, you know. <laughs> Amen. So for those who don't know, uh, so Latara Venice is our director of culture here for Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur. Uh, she has been involved in KDE forever, pretty much since the mm-hmm. beginning of KDE history. Uh, she was one of the first igniters in our igniters mentoring program when it started back at the end of 2015. Uh, mm-hmm. She is the founder of the Color Your Soul Company. Latara, let yes. everyone know what exactly it is that you're up to with uh, the Color Your Soul Company. Oh, gosh. You know, considering that it used to be my brand and now it's a whole company. That right there. That right there was one of those shifts. <laughs> that was one of those shifts, one of those transitions. Um, and what I do is I always want to tell people my mandate first is I'm a light bearer of God's wisdom. And what I do is I bring practical solutions that yield supernatural results. You know, and sometimes people don't even know it's yielding a supernatural result. Right. Right. Um, and it helps them to become whole and holistic and how you not just do life, but business, which is a part of your life anyway. Right. Yeah. Uh, and it, it shows up three different ways. Uh, vision activation strategies means I really help people to believe what they see, because that's always a struggle, strategize what God is showing them and move in that thing. Cause God is like, I need my people to go. I'm like, I yes, need you, God, they need to go. Uh, <laughs> You know, and that's really geared towards uh, my my focus in this season is coaches and mentors, but entrepreneurs in general when it comes to the vision activation, because there's so much that God has given us to show up in the marketplace with that we're not. Yeah. Uh, and then I specifically help coaches to build whole and holistic coaching businesses from a framework of the kingdom and not the framework of the world, because it's way different in the world. And we got to be careful yes. how we show up doing coaching and God had to show me because for a while, Shay, you know, I was like, oh no, I don't want to call myself a coach. I can't I do remember. That. I didn't want to do that. And then God said, that's who I've called you to be. You this is a part of who you are and you need to make it okay for those I've called to be coaches. I it wasn't it wasn't something that man just created. I put that in the mind of man. Yeah. So I had to really begin to accept that. Okay, yeah, you're a coach. That's what you are. And you have been doing this for a very long time and you have way more skill set and knowledge based on what God has shown you than what many coaches don't. Right. So moving in that and then teaching them to thrive because God was so specific. And some people get really nervous with me when I say, well, God gave me a dollar figure that his coaches can make. And they go, what? Uh huh. (laughs) What? I'm like, God is not playing. And if you're serious about being a coach, you can make a living on doing this. Absolutely. Like what we see, right? Because the average coach don't make money. So he's teaching me to help them to learn how to be equipped to thrive by creating income producing uh, products and services. And it it has been, I've been like, well, God, this is a whole other flow. We're not taking care of souls no more. <laughs> and he was but like, you no. are. <laughs> yes, that's what he showed me. You still helping them because that's their struggle. Their yes. soul has some, some, some heart issues. So yeah, you still doing that. 
But so today you, you say, because you've said this phrase twice. I mean, I've heard you say it a million times, but I feel like it's worth spending a minute on. You mm-hmm. said whole and holistic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And how, so when you were looking at like a kingdom framework around mm-hmm. the coaching approach, the coach, coaching um, industry, that type of mm-hmm. thing, you have this phrase whole and holistic. So what does mm-hmm. that, what does that mean? When I look at whole and holistic, it takes me all the way back to um, when God began to deal with me with Matthew 6, 33. And at first it was seek first the kingdom of God. And I was like, okay, God, what does this mean? What I, you know, I, what does it mean to seek you first? I pray, I fast, I do all of that. Isn't that seeking you? I worship. And then the message version. I love me some Eugene. I got to sit down and have a conversation with Eugene. And, <laughs> and I'm sitting there and I'm like, I go to Matthew 6, 33, and it says, steep your life in God reality, God initiative, and God provision. And my mind said, boom. And me being a wordsmith, I go look up the word reality. I go look up the word initiative, and I go look up the word provision. And it was initiative that hit me because initiative is about what's already been established. Mm. And when we move in what we're established in, it gives us this perspective of whole and holistic, right? Yes. And it's not about, <clears throat> excuse me, perfection. That's not it. Whole doesn't mean perfect. I always tell people I'm a whole pie. We're all whole pies. When you bake a pie or even you buy a pie, there's always an imperfection in there, but the pie is still whole. It has everything in it. It needs to taste like it's right. You know what I'm saying? So yes, it's it's like at Thanksgiving, my son made cornbread for the first time as I was teaching him how to make cornbread dressing. And he put too much salt in it. So we were like, oh my God, we can't eat this. So what I did the next day was I balanced it out and it became a good tasting piece of cornbread. So it was whole and it yes. had all the ingredients it needs. When we move in what we're established in, we have everything because he's provisioned. He gives us everything we need. And that holistic part, that's that kind of kind of supernatural piece of who are you? Who are you with God, with others? Right. Um, Holistically, your health and even your wealth. Yeah. People don't tie holistic living to wealth, but it ties into it. Whether you make a lot of money or not, it's about stewarding. Yes. It's really about stewarding. And so that's that whole and holistic perspective. That's good. Is that I'm established in Christ. So if I'm established, all I got to do is move in what I've been established in already. That's it. Yeah. That's freedom right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so good. I love that. I love that God has you focused in on just bringing kingdom, truth, revelation, thought, mindset, you know, all mm-hmm. of that to this industry. Because really, um, when you think about it, I mean, you and I have this conversation in the background all the time, but there's a lot of believers. If we don't bring, king, if we don't bring this kingdom reality to this, to this area, I mean, we're watching believers that are in the coaching industry go off in all kinds of odd directions, you Ooh, know, yeah. because it ends up being the money chase or this particular other type of thing that they're looking for. And they're not mm-hmm. in the, and when something doesn't seem to be working for them, then they end up you know, over here, you know, doing something else that just uh-huh. really isn't even aligned with, you know, the, the, the reality of who they are. So I'm super yeah. glad that you are, that you are doing this super good. Okay. So I didn't share on the, uh, well, I didn't share when I was listing all the things, but you're also my mentee. <laughs> I am. Yes. I am. am. So uh, I, I, I am the one that ends up in conversation with you that, that you it, then go off and you cry for a minute. Mm -hmm. You go talk to Jesus and then Mm -hmm. y'all get it together. And then you come Mm -hmm. back and do the work, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So last year we had a conversation. We had multiple conversations last year. They're going to get the benefit. Like, look, all the listeners get the benefit of just. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we had multiple conversations because there was multiple areas that we were kind of focused in on and just kind Mm -hmm. of fine tuning growth, refining or whatever. And there was something that I said to you. (laughs) <laughs> because I was seeing you were looking se- seeming really comfortable because you had grown so much mm-hmm, over the, mm-hmm. the previous few years. And I mean, in every area, I mean, just physically yes. in your body, in your mindset, in your finances, like in everything. Mm-hmm. And I was like, 
she not operating at the capacity like and i'm not talking about super i'm not talking about supernatural ephesians 3 and 20 exceeding abundantly above all you could ask or even think or imagine type of capacity i'm talking about just the capacity that you already like you already have yeah yeah not yeah. even the stretch yet you know and i was like you're not operating at your at your full capacity and i said that and that ended up leading into several months of all kinds of uh goodness I mm -hmm. would call it goodness. It was stretching and all of those mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. But such, the, and you're still walking this out. We call it 20 mm -hmm. of the year, 2022, capacity of the year. Capacity. capacity. Mm -hmm. So I want you to share, just like take me back, take us back <laughs> <laughs> to last year, what was going on with you and the moment that I said that, and then share like a couple of these like stages along the way of some of the things that God's revealed to you and, and some of the things you've had to walk through. Oh, to take okay. that word <laughs> and allow it to, you know, yes. ignite um, something. You know, that's a whole other flow because I, know. I was going on about my business, minding my business, doing my business. Looking at my money and like, oh, you know, girl, you're living. This is good, you know, because because <laughs> because every year now you interview me just about every every year since since the moment that I had the the time out there with God and my my heavenly, do you see me now? <laughs> every since then, and He promised me you'll never be broke again, right? And every year my money has increased. Right? Shay's one of the three people that get to see my numbers. So she has seen how the increase has happened. So I'm good. We done bought a house. I'm paying the bills. We, have no, we don't have no issues with groceries. My family is not struggling like we were in 2018. Right. We are not struggling. We are doing really good. And so I'm thinking I'm doing that God thing. I'm doing that God thing. I'm moving in this. I'm moving in this. I'm doing this. And, and. I heard the word complacency before Shay even came to me with it. And I was like, girl, that's just you just being, you know, you'd be overthinking and you, you'd be all up in a, you all know, be all like, oh, I'm, you know, I got to do more. I got to do more. And then Shay, I got, had this meeting with Shay, June 10th. I remember the day, June 10th. <laughs> I had this meeting with Shay Lines. And we're sitting, I'm talking to her because she, you know, we do updates and different things. She tell you what she wants you to have. And so she's looking at, she looked at all of my homework and she was like, that's good. And she kind of looked at me and she said, you know, you're not walking in your capacity. And I went, she mean I'm not walking in my capacity. You know, I didn't get it. And then I heard that word complacency. And all I could say is I received that. I, you did say that. I, I said, I received that. Um, that wasn't the time I cried. That was the time before when you had me, we had to get off in 15 minutes. <laughs> I couldn't even, I couldn't handle the call. You was like, I can't even do you no more. I talked to you in a couple of weeks. That, that was a bad one right there. It was a yes, good call, was. but it wasn't good for me. But, um, <laughs> but I, re when you said it, all I could do was sit and say, I received that. I, I received what you're saying. You're right. God's been showing me complacency, but I didn't, I guess I couldn't see where I had, where the complacency was, right? And then you had me do an exercise. So I'm, I'm, and the exercise was about capacity. And I'm thinking my business. And she's like, no, your life. And I was like, what you mean? Business is a part of my life. No, your whole life. So she challenged me to dream with God. And y'all, me and dreaming with God, sometimes I'd be like, God, what that look like? And I've done it. But every time I'm being stretched to a new level, it becomes a challenge for me to dream with him because, and to me, when she said that capacity, I was in Ephesians 3.20. Oh, I'm not doing the, you know, exceedingly more. I'm not receiving that because I'm not. And she, at the second set, she was like, no, that ain't it. That that ain't, even God was like, nah, girl, we ain't doing that. <laughs> that ain't it. Right. So you were telling me, and this is that practical part of being who we are. You yes. were telling me you're not even moving in the capacity that that is yours, that God trusts you with, not the more that he has for you because you can't handle the more. Correct. We're trying to get you to you that. With, right. Yes. Trying to get you to that place. Yes, where you begin to go. Oh, this is Ephesians 320. Right. So I'm, 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 I'm doing this. And it took me a long time. She gave me two weeks and I said, oh, we got a dream. We got a dream. Lord, we got a dream. So I, I didn't really, 
I didn't want to do it because it was going to push me into other areas that I didn't think I was prepared for. But if it's a part of what God has entrusted me with, I'm already prepared. That's that whole pie piece. It's already there. Yes. So I did the dreaming. I did the dreaming. I cried that next session, though, because I had to share the dream. And in a way, I think she was being nosy, but she was also stretching me, too. Because she, she can be nosy in my life. She <laughs> is. And, and this stretch, first off, that was a stretch, sharing that dream. Because yes. I don't share my dreams with anybody, really, but my children. Because they know how to, you know, watch me blubber. And then they go, oh, mama, here's a tissue. Wipe it up. Let's go. I don't really want to show that part to people. That's a part of capacity too. learning how to how to be vulnerable enough to say, hey, this is where I am and where I'm transparent. I may not always be as vulnerable. Yes, There's a difference that's good. There. And so I had to be transparent and vulnerable. Yep. With Shay on that day, because it, it it's a, it's another transition. There are things happening in my life and I'm like going yeah, God, but can I keep this wall up around that? And he's like, no. So dreaming broke those walls down and then sharing just made them like go all the way away. And so that dream piece was really big. And then uh, I think it was a few months later, I get a call from Dr. Tony saying, or I text her, say, hey, how you doing today? And she said, mm, I had a whole open vision about you. And I'm like, oh, Lord, I'm going to call you. That was another stretch for me. I'm doing the work. Here I am doing the work, doing the work. And she gave me the open vision. And she said, and you need to go do it now when we get off this phone. It was more stretching and more dreaming. Yes. Right. Yes. And then what God began to show me, this thing that I trusted you with, you get to dream about what it looks like. Yes. I was like, Whoop, what? Because <laughs> when Tony gave me the vision, I was like, okay, God, show me what it looks like. And he said, oh, no, no, baby girl, you show me what it looks like. Come on. Come on. You already have my heart. What we doing? Well, right. I was like, freedom to dream. Let's go. Yes. And that's what, and it was so funny because he reminded me Now I had kind of downgraded the dream and forgot had already wrote this down. But now I keep it close to me because what I had did was I tucked it away. I yes. wrote it down over almost two years ago and I tucked it away, never to be seen again. Right. That's a, it, I didn't mean for it never to be seen again. Right. Tucking it away. Yes. Like, you know, it's gone. It's like there. put it on the shelf. Yeah. And I realized, wait a minute, it ain't even as big as what I said. Hold up. Let me go to this dream and pull the pieces out. And I just was like, wow. And now certain things come up. Oh, I want to add that. And oh, I want to add that. So that it is what I desire. And I yes. remember telling you in the dream, I remember telling you that a part of my dream was I wanted the freedom. I wanted freedom. And that came from me expressing my desires. And I didn't realize I wasn't walking in freedom because yes. again, I'm going about my thing, doing what I'm doing. And then all of a sudden, God is showing me, yeah, but you're not free enough. If you can't dream with God, you're not free enough. And Come that's on. what he began to show me. Come it's on. like, it's okay for you to dream. Yes. And when God begins to show you, I trust you, then that means he trusts you to be able to say, I would love for it to look like this. You know, yes. and I always have this. I always tell people, here's the thing about God, though, because, you know, God will give you what you want, but he takes that thing and he, he molds it so that all the toxic stuff, right? Because I could say, oh, I want X, Y, Z, right? Tony's open vision was about a house. Let me just put that out there. Okay. I, I want X, Y, and Z, right? But I don't want my, I don't want this person to be able to come and I don't want this in the room. And blah, 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 blah. That's toxicity. And so what God does, is he says, okay, I can give you your desires, but I can't give you the mess that goes along with it. So let me mold you. Let me mold the desire a little bit more. And then I'm going to kiss it with my glory. And here it is perfected. Come for you. on. So that's how that thing looks. It's like, yes. oh, that's the whole Psalms uh, uh, 37, 4, 37, right? 4. That's right. That's the whole thing. That's and it. And it was like, oh, wait a minute. You take it, right? And you take my, my humanness, my toxic mess out of it. And you say, girl, let me put my supernatural touch on it. So here you good. Go. 
And then it, it turns out just the way you said you wanted it, but it's perfected with his. Yes. And, and that was something I've talked about for years and I would experience it to a point. But until you stretched me and you said, and don't, I don't want to hear anything about your business. I want it to be about your life. I yeah. thought Shay was crazy, but she was right. Because then what it did, Shay, is it was it helped me to move in the capacity That's of right. the business piece. That's right. To be it was able all to connected. It was all connected. Whole and holistic. Whole and holistic. That's it right there. And it has, and and it's so funny when I did my site and I sent it to you, when I did my website, I was like, oh, she's gonna find something wrong. She's gonna find something, Lord. She and she was like, oh, I love the language and bloom, bloom, bloom. <laughs> She said, the only thing is, I can't figure out where to set an appointment with you. And I was like, yeah, I think I need to work. That was it. Yeah. I thought, show I me, how, she say, show me how I can work with it. you. Make it easy. Yeah. It was, I was like, oh, God says, see, I told you. Because he gave me specific instructions on how to do the website. Yes. Right. And I was like, who does a website on Kartra? What are you talking about, God? And I did it. I fl- I flowed with it, and it looks good. I was yes. like, "God, you're so good." Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> I love that, and I don't know whether we've ever talked about this on the podcast before, but I think you're a good example of this, which is not prescribing to, you know, everybody's twenty step blueprint mm-hmm. for how to market your products and service and stuff like that. It's like, Mm -hmm. you know, and even in the moments when you have felt like maybe tempted or feeling like maybe what you're going to do isn't going to be enough. And like, maybe I should do X, Y, and Z. Holy Spirit would always draw you back to the simplicity of what he's given you, which is use your mouth, go, go do that video and go talk. Mm -hmm. And in this Mm -hmm. case, people who want to work with you, hop on the call with them, have a Mm -hmm. conversation. Like that's, that's what he is uniquely gifted you to do in a way that really connects with people for them to know, I want to work with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the, it's so funny because I had a session with one of my accountability partners earlier and she saw the site and she was like, well, are you going to have landing pages? I was like, God ain't told me that yet. So, you know, I said right now, he's like, social media is going to be the platform. You're going to use these platforms. You're going to show up more and in lives, you're going to show up more talking. Don't you remember when you filled that that certification program the first time around in 48 hours just by talking? I was like, yeah. Don't you remember when you filled this program just by talking? Yeah. yeah. Right. That is that is the voice of my marketing strategy. We yes. all have a voice for a mark. So for some people, it is going to be that long sales page. That's yes. good for you. Yeah. For good me, for you. It's not, right. <laughs> it's not yes. for me. If there ever is a landing page, like my certification landing page for building your own certification, you know, it's not long. I did exactly what God said. Put a video, tell them what they get and they can apply. Yes. Okay. Yes. And you kept it simple. And I I think it's really important. I think it's really important for, and I want people to hear this and not hear, oh, well, therefore I'm probably doing too much. I should just do a video and then put in a thing that may not work for you. So hear what she said. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't, you know, hear what she said and don't, don't make it more than what she actually said. Mm -mm. She's doing the thing that she's doing her unique Mm -hmm. marketing methods, her unique, Mm -hmm. allowing God to be the source of her marketing blueprint. Yeah. That's what what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 That's what, cause that's my personality. It's my identity is God told me in 2019, the money is in your mouth. Yes. And I was like, okay, so what are we doing? He didn't tell me the money was in a long, a long page. He didn't tell me that the money was in, you know, um, doing a, a certain video series and then have people sign up for it. I don't even market an email list a whole lot. I think I have maybe 300 people on my email list, but you can guarantee that my income has grown every year since God told me I would never be broke again and just hear him. Yeah. So it is. It, it's and I have some clients where they do do long pages. Yeah, that's what God is calling them to. Yeah. I have some who do do the video series and the email sign up, you know, thing, but it's not for everybody. And God is showing me you're not doing that in this season. Right. So okay. be free to flow with him. Right. Mm-hmm. That's so good. One of the other things that uh, we worked through and this whole capacity thing was actually positioning yourself to be able to function. 
in Mm -hmm. this increased capacity. (laughs) So share a little bit about what that means, what that meant and what that looked like for you. Well, first off, let me say the website was one of them because I had to simplify. And anyone who right knows me knows that I was one of the first 300 people to build on WordPress. People hired me when WordPress was just a blog in 2006. Yep. Everybody, nobody was building on WordPress. And then I, I was taught by someone and he said, let me give you something you can make you some money with. Let me show you how to do this. Yeah. And people started hiring me. So I had been working on WordPress sites for over 10 years. Right. And um, I went to go work on my site to update it, even though I kept hearing go to Kartra. And I was like, girl, go on, do what you know how to do. And I go over and I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I was like, okay, how do I make a column? I forgot. And I almost cried. And then I heard God say, you're not supposed to do that. And I was like, what? And then my son, Mr. Worshipper, you know, he had been praying for me because I was in tears thinking I was going crazy. And he said, mama, I heard the same thing. I don't think that you're supposed to be doing that. And I just, I went over to Kartra. Now I did try it again, but then the, guess what? The plugin I use to design the page, it malfunctioned. <laughs> Let me contact them right now for my money. Blah, blah, blah. And God was like, The devil is a liar. <laughs> yes. And God was like, What did I tell you? I was like, Oh, okay. Let me go on over here. And I was able to go into Kartra, find a template that was perfect, and just flow all the yes. way through. So that was one thing. And then in knowing that, I was like, Wait a minute. I need to expand my team. <gasps> that's going to be more money out. Oh Lord, what we get ready to do. So in doing my, my dream profit and loss sheet, because that dream, that's the dream. That's what, you know, this is what you want. First off, the numbers freaked me out. I was like, Ooh, I can make that much money in a month. God, for real. Woo, me. <laughs> and, but it goes back to that dream, right? Yes. Like, how are you going to maintain the homes, right? I'll just keep that right where that is. How you going to yes. maintain the homes? Yes. I told you you could do this. I'm right. not going to give you money on a tree. What I'm going to do is give you strategy to be able to do that, right? So it, it went back to that. And I'm looking at this dream profit and loss. And it's so funny because I knew I needed it, but I didn't make it a line item specifically. Like I want this team member. I want that kind of team member. What I did was I put them all under contractors. I didn't break it down because if I put it under contractors, it was general. Yes. And if I got them fine, if I didn't, that's fine too. So the next day I happened to have a session with Shea Bynes and then <laughs> we're sitting there, we're talking and she was like, so who would you need on your team to really make this work? And I said, well, I would need a tech person. What would they do? Well, they would work Kartra for me. They would um, help me to build out my sites, you know, and any pages I may need, you know, because again, God is showing me in this season, you can't do X, Y, and Z. Right. Keep it simple. Scale it down, Latara. And so I, right there with Shay, I said, okay, tech person. And then I forgot the other, oh, a market, like a marketing manager, a, a, a media marketing manager, because I know that media is really huge for me. Social media is a big part of it. So I need someone who will help me with that blueprint of my media marketing map, right? right? So I put that person on there too. And I was like, okay, damn there, Lord. And then I just broke it down. My son works for me. So I broke it down. Like, God, who is he? He said, he's your assistant. Okay. That's what he does. I want you all to be hearing the specificity here. Very specific. Because that's, that's, that's part of the, the dreaming Mm -hmm. with him Mm -hmm. and positioning and posturing yourself to walk in. Yes. It is that level of specificity. Yeah. You also had to, because there was, you were, you were thinking, oh my goodness, there's this and I'm doing this and I'm doing this with Mm -hmm. this. And I was like, okay, yes. And you can do all of those things, but your time. Your schedule, your oh, times God. of day yes. where your energy flow mm-hmm. is a little bit better than other times, whatever, how you want to structure your day, how you can be. Yeah. Just really, I'm actually walking through that with pretty much every, all of my personal mentees right now, because it's mm-hmm. been so, so key to creating that. Yeah. That yeah. space for that, what you want to that, for. That's that, that schedule for free spirit like me is just. <laughs> 
But what did I tell you? What did I tell you about how, how to deal with your free spirit still? I don't remember, but I just did the work. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you guys because she doesn't remember. I told you that you could still all those things that you like to be free about. Like, yeah. I want to go to the garden. I want to do this. Well, put them in the put them in the schedule. You did. To, you did. To be able and to I do did. That. That's what I did. So I did. Yeah, you did. And, and because now. And it was so funny because this is helping somebody. I told I told my my collaborative, right? You might y'all, some of y'all know it as mastermind. God gave me a whole other name. I told my collaborative members, I was like, listen, I'm not free on Wednesdays anymore. Cause typically I took clients Tuesday through Thursday, two days a week now, which meant I was like, oh, wait a minute. So catch this, y'all. I went. I can't take as many private clients because I have my collaborative members over here. And then I have these few people over here because I have personal mentees too. And, you know, and my team, believe it or not, are filled with my mentees. And so here I am like, okay, I have to stretch them into what God has for them. I have to move them even more so they don't become complacent either. And okay, what does that look like? What is my timing like? Okay, well, I, I can't do, you know, I can only do this many clients. Okay, so let me go look at my pricing structure now. What does that mean? Yep. See, a lot of us won't deal with that pricing piece. Well, Shay don't stretch me since 2017. <laughs> I think it's when she started me with that to, to work on my, my numbers. Like, yes. do these numbers, do these numbers, do these numbers. And I, and I think for believers, we do think that God's going to put the money on the tree. We're just going, you know, we're always looking for miracle signs and wonders. And that's great and that's wonderful. But God's like, here's a sign. Do your numbers. <laughs> and then you'll experience some wonder, right? So <laughs> it's fine. I mean, <laughs> it's the truth anyhow. It's the truth, right? And so I was like, okay, so that means that I need to take my numbers here and, and then, okay. And I, I've learned how to be okay with the fact that I don't serve everybody. And that as I am scaling down, even those I serve will probably have to go elsewhere or they'll have to up, up, uh, elevate, you know, what is that? Level up. Like Sierra says, level up. Yes. You know, <laughs> they're going to have to level up to five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. Yeah. And so, <laughs> and, and so it helped me to be able to even structure my pricing around not just my private clients, because guess what? I can't have as many private clients anymore. I have been told this by a dear friend who was a mentor, Roberto Candelaria, and then Shea Bynes. You need, you take too many people. This should not yeah. be your biggest item line number. Yes. So you should not be making the most money from, from this. Right. I was like, but I love to work with the people. Well, <laughs> I found out it was an energy drainer. I love y'all. For those of y'all who are listening, I love y'all. But you know, I'm, I'm, I'm honest with my clients. At the end of the year, I take two weeks off and I tell them, don't contact me. I'll see you in the new year. <laughs> but you know what it also is, though? Seriously, it's also assignment. I mean, yes. if you are mm -hmm. spending, and this was a conversation I had with you, if you're spending the majority of your time with one-on-one, -on -one, but God's called you to bring kingdom, like, that would be like when instead of me doing what I did, with, I could have made a lot more money personally mm -hmm. working mm -hmm. just with like a handful of people or whatever, you know, to do high end. People will call it consulting and this and that right. or whatever. But no, mm -hmm. the assignment was the movement. The assignment yes. was to grow team, to, mm -hmm. you know, to mentor people, to mm -hmm. all of these things. It was a broader thing. Mm -hmm. And so what you, and what you have is something that it's not everybody has a business that's focused on reaching, you know, large numbers of people. Not everyone right. has something that's has a movement within the business. It's not right. It's not everyone's thing. Some people are like, right. listen, I'm a consultant and I work with people mm -hmm. and that's amazing. Do it. Do it to the glory of God. That's awesome. But for you. Right. It would have it would have been taking all that space mm -hmm. to then not have the time to do the things that are so needed in the industry. Yes. That working one-on-one yeah. -on -one when mm -hmm. the assignment was to reach masses of coaches. Yes. You mm -hmm. wouldn't be on assignment. 
No, I wouldn't be. And that was a part of it too, because now I looked at Wednesdays and I was like, okay, so now you have a whole entire day in addition to Mondays and Fridays, even though I had now I have things scheduled on them days. I got different days. I had to tell Shay what my days was, what I was doing on what days, what have you. And and having this this day uh to be able to not just focus on um this movement because it is a movement it's it's a whole movement to be able to help coaches shift mindsets and perspective um around how we've been coaching or how we've been taught to coach right, right. that's that's and it's going to take a whole lot of she was very clear with me today when i shared with her about my office space and what it means and she's like oh that's perfect space for a lot of media huh and I was like, yeah. <laughs> so that. <laughs> You can do a lot of media now and I can, but guess what? That's a part of my voice in this season yes. is that I have to be doing a lot of video, audio, whatever it may look like in order to get the message out. That's yes. why God is telling me, get on Instagram. That's yes. why God is telling me, TikTok ain't going to be personal no more. You're going to use it for business. I'm like, yes. what? You know, and, and, and it it's, and Wednesdays is a good day now because it's a calmer day here at home. It's quiet, you know? I was like, oh, yes, I get this now. And I'm not spending as much energy on people one on one. So I'm not as tired. My in that's that energy level thing. And and then I could take a good nap on a Wednesday and then get up and work a little bit more. Come on. So, yeah. so this these are the practical. I hope p- people are paying attention. Like these are s- everything that we're talking about is super practical. Mm-hmm. It's like these are super practical steps that help you to align with the capacity that God has already shown you, you have. Yeah. yeah. You know, again, we're not even talking about the Ephesians three and 20 stuff. We're mm-hmm. listen, we're always open to that. And we believe for that too. I'm mm-hmm. literally talking about catching up with mm-hmm. what he's already, you, you already have the container for. Yes. Right? That's and good. Then you steward that then you start to realize, wow, he's just, he's beginning to just overflow, overflow, Uh overflow. But there's things that we've got to work through in our minds and our hearts, the stretching that we got to do and all those stuff that helps us to kind of do the things that we need to do to position ourselves or that Ephesians and that Ephesians 320. I think a lot of times, Latara, that we think certain things are Ephesians 3 and 20. And he's like, (laughs) you think that's Ephesians 3 and 20? Yeah. Exceedingly abundantly above all you could ask, think, or even imagine. That's for yes. those who don't know what Ephesians 3 and 20 says, like that he it, is able to do exceedingly yes. abundantly above all you could ask or even think or, or even imagine, right? Yeah. I, I, I know yeah. Which translation you're reading. I think that's a lot good. of us think that certain things are Ephesians 3 and 20 in there. Not. Yeah, I did. Like, oh, that's basic for you, sis. Like I already, son, daughter, like that, like we, you had the capacity for that three years ago. I'm trying to catch you up. We've got more to go. Yeah. Cause that's what, that's what, that's. That's what I saw, especially when I showed you my numbers and you were like, oh, yeah, that's the ability that you have. That's yeah, right. Like show me, right. you have that's now what you're dream. able to produce. Right. But God's capacity is out the box. Yes. So, you know, but this is what you can contain, you know, in that in that box we like to be in. This is yes. what you can contain right there. That's if right. We, if you think about it, even when we live in these boxes, we still ain't using that box effectively. We it's exactly it, that we can bust out of it. Right. Exactly. And so that. that has been, and when I saw the numbers, I went, oh God, that's a, that's, ooh, that's, and I got overwhelmed. So I'm thinking that's the Ephesians 320. Exceedingly more than you could ever, you know, abundantly more you could dream or imagine. And I was like, and God was like, that's why you need to dream with me more because you ain't stretching. <laughs> 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 Oh my gosh. And I don't want, I don't want people to miss the, you know, miss this because I was just having this conversation with someone the other day about just how the, the more value that you're, that you're just kind of like you're aligned with God and the more Mm -hmm. value that you're offering to people. It's just really cool to see how God just continues to increase. You know, know, I talk about being a distribution center in the kingdom of God. It's like, Mm -hmm. it's like more and more, it's like you have greater capacity to receive and to give you know, to mm-hmm. receive and to give. So you, you, it's like, you can, you can steward more in the kingdom mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. you're just continuing to align and just create all that value. That's why it's like for people who sometimes people get frustrated because they have an assignment that's that they're like, Oh, this feels like a slower path or mm-hmm. whatever, but there's nothing better than being 
and alignment with God, there is absolutely nothing better. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing like you never, you know, God, God loves the process. We're all trying to get to the end real fast, but it's in the process where so much happens and changes you change. Lord knows I'm not the same person that I was even nine months ago. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and it's been an awesome thing to, I've learned how to flow in the process because I know yes. in the process, there are way more blessings in the process than there is in trying to get to the end. Can you say it again though? There's way more blessings in the process than it is in trying to get to the end. Because once you get to the end, that's it. And it's like, Oh, Okay. And then you're simply going, okay, God, what's next? So I love the process because I shift and elevate in the midst of it all the time. Shift and elevate. I always say, I'm God's yes, girl. When he says, go, I go. When he says, shift, I shift. When he says, elevate, I elevate. I might not always like it, but I'm going to be obedient because there's power in that obedience. That's that's the pro- that's what people don't want is the obedience in the process. They don't, the obedience. And the <laughs> they change. want a dream. Don't want to be obedient. Right. <laughs> Here's my dream. And I'm here to get to the end my way. And then it's right. like, no, yes. you did that wrong. Right. right. And then the, here, here comes that hustle and that grind mentality. Exactly. So, that. Yeah, oh, the process so is a great space. Yes. I yes. The the pro- did you just say the process is great space? Is that what you just said? I say it's a great space. It's a great it, yeah. space. Mm-hmm. Yes. The process is, is it really mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. This is so good. Thanks yeah. for sharing all that. I, You're welcome. It's, this is just goodness. Super good. Okay. So for those who want to connect further with what you're up to, this new website of yours, <laughs> where do they go? Um, just go to www. Please put the www in there. Dot That's it. www.lataravenice.com. So go there, check it out. And you can always find me on Facebook, Instagram. And I guess now God is telling me TikTok is going to be about business. So be over there too, you know, because- What's your handle on, are you Latara Venice on all of this? Latara Venice on social media. Everywhere you go, I'm Latara Venice. Okay. Um, Each of those things I talked about, the build to thrive, the, you know, holy holistic, the vision activation, all that is geared to be a whole part of this whole marketing process that I'm yeah. in. So y'all going to see me talk about all of that. All That's of good. That. I got a bonus question. It just popped yes. up. So let me ask you before we go, as I want to ask you a question as a director of culture, mm-hmm. what are you most excited about for 2022 within the kingdom driven entrepreneur movement from your lens of being the director of culture? Being the director of culture, I, I am over a couple of the the legs of what we do, right? Um, I think one of the one of the most things that I'm excited about the most is actually the certification program, the the KDE certification program, because again, it's going to be working with business coaches, advisors, things like that, and helping them to to understand the the heart of God yeah. for for the industry that they work in and the people that they're called to work with. I'm looking for, I love igniters. You know, that's my big, I, that's it. I love igniters. Yes. Um, I'm even a participant again. I'm going through the process again with the people to hold myself accountable. But I think I'm so excited about the, the, that program because it's building a different community. It is. A whole yeah. different community of coaches. And it's stretching us to see the coaching industry and the marketplace in a different way. Um, and then I love the community that's being built too. Like, yes. especially I, I run the igniter circles and to see people so excited when the circles are coming again, when the circle, and that's like a peer group option. Yes. That's that, that's a part of igniters. And I love that as well, because what's happening is people are learning how to, um, really kind of be movements within the movement as they are creating these circles. um, And then they want to continue with the circles. And I go, okay, you can only go two rounds. (laughs) (laughs) Go meet somebody else. You have to go meet somebody else now, right? Uh, It's so So good. That's what I love is that community, that collaboration and that stretch. Yes. To do this thing God's way. Yeah, that's good. Thanks for sharing. You guys go to www.lataravenice.com. Latara, thanks as always for joining today. Appreciate you and love you. Love you too. Another great conversation with one of my 
favorite people in the world, Miss Latara Venice. And now I have with me one of my other favorite people in the world. <laughs> it's Mr. Bynes, my husband and the CEO of Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur. How's it going, babe? It's going well, but girl, stop playing. You know, I am the most favorite person in the world, <laughs> depending on the day that is. I knew you were going to have something smart to say. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about the takeaways that you that really stood out for you from my conversation with Latara. OK, well, I have three that are that I wanted to bring up today. I had more, but, you know, it, it's only three that we need to stick with. OK. <laughs> and so the first one I have here is um, if you don't move in your current capacity, he being God will not give you more. You know, and it's a stewardship thing. You know, you want to jump in there or you want me to elaborate? Go ahead and elaborate. Well, I meant the bottom line is, you know, God always gives us stuff in seed form. And if we're not willing to to utilize what we have that's in seed form, then there is no increase for us to have. There's there's an action that needs to be taken. If you have a seed, you need to plant it in the ground. If he's giving you capacity, do something with the capacity that he's already given you or else he's not going to. There's not going to be a harvest without you doing something with that capacity that you have. Yeah, that's good. Good word. All right. What's the next one? The second one I have here is if you can't dream with God, you're not free enough. Wow. You know, and I think that's a direct quote um, from Latara. But like if you're if you're having a problem being able to dream with God, there's something that's holding you. There's a mindset or something that's holding you back to keep you from feeling like you're either worthy to dream with God or you deserve to dream with God. I guess those two are kind of the same thing, but there's something holding you back if you can't right. dream with God. Yeah, wow. that that is absolutely true. I could track that back for me personally and what that's looked like over the years also. So yeah, I, uh, I agree with her statement. <laughs> that's good. Mm -hmm. The last one I have here is uh, Latara was talking about, you know, there's nothing wrong with looking for signs and what you're doing in life. Um, but she said something that was extremely funny. And so it came to me a different way. Um, so what I got was a playoff of a scripture. Okay. For the complacent are always looking for a sign, but there will be no sign given except do your numbers. <laughs> 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 you need to do your numbers and you might find a sign within doing your numbers that God has already given you capacity just in doing your numbers, that you have more than you thought you had just in doing your numbers. There's a sign in, in a signpost. That's really good. Can I add, can I add something other than do your numbers on top of that? No, go away. Well, of course I can't. I'm the host of the podcast. So That's, well, why are you asking me? <laughs> I actually just talked about this um, in a Q&A session with Igniters the other day. And it was something the Holy Spirit just dropped on me in the moment. And it was, you know, because you said, what was the first sin of that for the complacent? Say it again. The complacent are always looking for a sign, but there will be no sign given except do your numbers. Yeah. So I'm going to say, except for go back in your journal and see what he already said, because there's a mm. lot of people who are waiting, but he already said it and you forgot it or you just decided not to do it because you were scared or something or whatever. But yet it's right there waiting for you. So some of you guys check your numbers. <laughs> some of you check your notebooks. <laughs> mm. Oh, that's super good. Good stuff. We did all of them, right, babe? Yep, that's all of them. All right, good stuff. Well, all of you, let's see. What should we share as we close out? I would say to keep an eye out on your inbox, those of you who are either starting a business for the first time or you are restarting and having to shift to something new. Uh, we actually have something called the Kingdom Driven Startup. It's a business accelerator, but yet we're doing it by the power of God's grace and at the pace of his grace. So it's an accelerator at the pace of God's grace <laughs> for the season that you're in. And so keep your eye out for that. If you fall into that category, because we have something coming up for you that opens up next week. If you are not on our email list, then you don't get the announcements about the various things. Uh, you don't get Bill's rapid fires. You're not getting announcements about uh, the various resources that we have available to you. So go to kingdomdrivenentrepreneur.com slash connect. K 
kingdomdrivenentrepreneur.com slash connect. And that's how you can make sure to know about all the things Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur. All right. We will look forward to talking to you more next week on the next episode of the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur podcast. Take care and God bless you. Thanks for joining us on the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur podcast. If you've enjoyed what you've heard today, we encourage you to subscribe and spread the word. And don't forget, you can gain access to even more resources, plus a thriving community of fire starters by visiting our website at kingdomdrivenentrepreneur.com.